Hello, hello Facebook. I am back for part two of my Mad Hatter design and transfers. So hopefully you were with me when I was on earlier today. I did a live during the day. Um, the house was nice and quiet and I thought it's a perfect time to get together and paint and I could show you everything that I needed to show you. So we have done our base and our second coats and our ombre for our Mad Hatter design dresser. So hopefully you all can see, I wanted to kind of aim the camera down so that you can see all the drawers. I want you to be able to get right in here and get close with me so I'll be dragging you in so that you can see what I'm gonna be doing tonight. My name is Melissa, I'm with the Top Drawer RVA located in Richmond, Virginia, and I am a furniture painter. I am a furniture artist and I like to make pretty things. I work with Dixie Bell as a content creator and together we get to show you all of the pretty things. So today, if you were watching, you got to see me do this crazy madness right here. I know it's a bit much for people. I know that this is a little over the top, but let me tell you, it's fun and it's fabulous and I think that, you know, a lot more people like it than not. And why not just be a little bit brave, a little bit bold? There, I just turned up my lights a little bit. Can you see me a little better now? I'm gonna be able to scooch in and see my comments. Hi, <laughs> what are you doing, Erin? You're the first one. You, you might be the only one. It's dinner time. People are busy. You never know. You never know what's going on. So today, if you were watching, you got to see me paint the base. I did an ombre base of, you can see it better on the sides here, aubergine into muscadine wine into rusty nail. Rusty nail is kind of like my new favorite jam. It's my new favorite new favorite color. And then I did one drawer in pure antebellum blue, and then I did two drawers in a mix, okay? I have holy guacamole into kernel mustard, and then I also have peony into, um, I believe it's apricot, what did I do? Yep, it's apricot. So I also then took the time to come in and kind of add opposite shading on either side. So this has got a little bit darker of the muscadine wine. This side ended up getting a little bit darker of the antebellum blue. I wanted to pull it all together so that when I do my transfers, it's going to mesh and it's going to go together well. So this piece was planned as a Mad Hatter design because of my partial transfers I have left, okay? I have purchased over the last, I don't know, maybe six months or so, um, three different transfers actually four, one's completely gone. I think I might have a tiny little, little bit of it left in there. But I have got three transfers, Midnight Floral, okay? I've got a foil, a foil transfer, which is all like gold and really shimmering, um, a Baroque style. And then I've got Moment, which is basically just cute little French words that I like to cut up and add in between everything. So I've got a couple things I wanna show you tonight. I also wanted to bust out my new Moonshine Metallics, okay? Moonshine Metallics in the deep woods. If you can see it, it's green, it's glittery, it's gorgeous. I love it. So I will be using this for the first time tonight. And also tonight for the first time, I'll be using a new gilding wax. And you all know, if you follow me, how much I love some warm gold gilding wax. Like I'm obsessed. I put it on everything. This is the new Anastasia. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's red. It's red and it's sparkly and I'm all over it. I think I'm gonna put this like all around the edges. So I thought I would hop back on and show you guys part two of my journey so that you can come along and see what I'm doing. So this is the plan for the top drawer. I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna lay it down flat. And I might have to actually aim this down a tiny bit more so you all can see what I'm doing here. Good, two hands, you can see that. I have got basic painter's tape and I want to paint off some stripes because I want to use my deep woods and accent this piece. It's going to just add that little bit of shine and it's going to lighten up this drawer a little bit. When I do my stripes on anything, I always start in the middle, okay? Right in the middle of where the drawer is. And this is easy for me to see because this is on like right in between where the hardware is, okay? So when I look at a drawer, I find the middle, I kind of eyeball it and I jump in here and I just do a a middle stripe. Then I'm gonna rip off another piece of tape because this is gonna be my marker. This is gonna be my measuring tool in order to get to the next stripe. This is just gonna allow me to keep, make sure that my stripes are evenly placed um, and I'm not gonna have any weird 
miss measurements by using that little tape in the middle you know this just helps keep me on track so I'm just taping off where my stripes will be in my delicious moonshine metallics deep woods which is amazing and green and I'm so excited to try new things every time I put an order in with Dixie Bell I make sure to order at least one thing that I've never used before one color one type of brush one type of anything um, this order for me was the sea spray which I've never used before and also the um, the deep woods okay so it's gonna let me try new things every single time keep my artist brain working keep me pushing and trying new things it's important so how's everybody doing tonight? If you're watching and joining me, you might be a new follower. I seem to have a little bit of an influx of some new, new followers in the past couple days. And that's a big thank you to Dixie Bell for letting me work on their page and do a live on their page. I was able to um, paint a piece, which you can actually see behind me in the corner. That little green, kind of grungy, decrepit cupboard. Um, and I was able to paint that start to finish on the Dixie Bell page. And that let me kind of meet some new people, get out there, put myself out there to the world. Okay, so this piece has got some stripes. I'm gonna be painting them off. And normally when I paint my stripes, I would burnish my edges with the original color. But here's the deal. I'm with you all, I'm hanging out on my little live feed. I don't wanna take up all of my time waiting for this original color to dry um, and once again if you're just joining me this original color on here is antebellum blue I'm just taping off my drawer and I'm gonna be able to get out my new deep woods and paint these stripes so that's what I'm gonna do now is open up this paint put it somewhere safe because I, I, I have so much paint on the floor you guys right now it's crazy I use every paintbrush I own today to paint this little beauty so that I wouldn't have to get up and walk away from the screen. I wanted you guys to see, um, I wanted you to see what I was doing and I didn't want to waste anybody's time. So I'm going to put this over here, get it out of the way. Here's my delicious green deep woods. I'm really excited to see how thick it's going to go on and the plan is for this piece to just hit the edge. I don't want to do this, this lip that's on the drawer. I'm just lightly going to come in and hit this edge. So right now I'm just going to burnish down my edges, make sure that they're stuck. Make sure that when I get in there with my metallics, I've got a nice, even place to put them. So let's just give this a go. And this is a good time, you guys, to take some time and ask me some questions because I can see my camera. And um, you got me. You got your own personal teacher right here. So go ahead and ask if you have any questions about this piece. This piece was sanded and clean with Dixie Belle's White Lightning. I did not prime it. It's a fairly new French provincial piece. It didn't have any, um, it was a fairly light wood. I knew that I wouldn't have any bleed through. And my plan for sealing this piece is to use Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax and Clear. So I won't worry as much about bleed through. If I was using my sealer in a clear coat, I would have definitely primed it because I wouldn't want any bleed through at all. So there you go. So here's a trick to using metallics. When you paint your metallics on, try and keep your brush strokes even and in one direction, okay? That's going to help you minimize your brush strokes when it dries because metallics are a little funky. Metallics always, you know, they, they like to try your patience a little bit. The next step is to do your metallics on top of a like-minded color, okay? So me painting these metallics on here in this funky little green color they're already going on a green drawer. It's not gonna be that much of a difference, and I'm not gonna to have to do as many coats as if I was painting, say, gold on top of here, or if I was painting um, this green on top of a really light color. So by keeping it together and in the same color family, you're able to minimize your brush strokes, you're able to make sure that you're not gonna have that many lines, and you're gonna keep it pretty. There you go, there's two down. So stripes aren't hard. They're just like a fun little accent to my Mad Hatter design. I love some black and white stripes, but 
you guys, I'm kind of over it now. <laughs> like I've just, you see that piece peeking at me behind me. Um, I think I paint something to the point of, I don't want to paint it anymore. And that's just me being, you know, being fussy. I like to paint new things. I like to try new things. I don't like to always be born in the same. I mean, that goes for restaurants. That goes for everything for me. <laughs> I like to, I like to spice it up. I don't want to keep it the same all the time. Um, I want to try new things. So this is the first time using my Dixie Bell Deep Woods Metallic and I'm digging it. I was dying to get my hands on something that I could paint with this color. Now here's the question. I've got a tiny little baby strip over here and a tiny one over there. I can't decide if I should just paint that tiny little strip or if I should just leave it. I think I'm just going to leave it um, because if I paint that tiny little stripe right there, Hmm, let's see. What do you think? Should I do that tiny little bit on the end? Is it gonna throw off my stripe pattern if I don't? I'm worried. Now I'm gonna have to use a different brush. Come in here with a tiny brush and see if I can do this. So I often keep artist brushes on hand. Just a little pack that I get from say, um, Michaels or Hobby Lobby. Because you never know when you're gonna need to be just, just a little bit of paint, just a little tiny precise spot versus you know a big giant paintbrush so this is going to let me do that okay i'm doing them you know what if it stinks it's just paint i can always go back over it i make my own rules right be be the boss of you you don't have to worry about that this is not a custom piece this is me just literally painting something for the sake of painting it because i wanted to show you my mad hatter design um, if you do get a chance and you wanted to see kind of like a shortened version of what I'm doing today and you wanted to go over to the Dixie Bell Instagram page, Dixie Bell did feature a five to six minute video of mine doing this whole Mad Hatter effect basically in high speed. I showed you from step one to the very end and I kind of, I, I kind of like doing fast videos. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to keep everybody occupied. This is the way I learn best is by, by watching somebody do something and I need it to be usually pretty quick or I'm going to get bored. So hence the talking, There's lots and lots of talking. Okay. So I'm just going to keep my brush moist because I want this coat to dry. Okay. So this is my one coat of deep woods over top of my antebellum blue and it's just going to cook over here and get dry. So this is the plan for the transfers. Many, many partial pieces of my transfer are here. And I just want to do these bottom two drawers. So do I do them inside or do I take them out? I feel like I need to leave them in. If you remove your drawers when you're doing transfer, you're doing a pattern, sometimes it can get a bit hard to see um, how things are going to lay out. And I definitely want to look, take. I definitely want to, um, to know where things are going. The other thing for these transfers is that this tiny little lip that I didn't paint on the top drawer, I don't want to put a transfer on, on either of these drawers. Little things like that, that little bit of continuity when you're looking at a piece is what's going to make it look amazing. Watch for those little things. Don't just go all slap hazard and put them everywhere. You want to kind of match what you're doing on each drawer, on each piece. And what you do to one side, always do to the other. I did one tiny little gold transfer here before I got on with you. Um, because I wanted to get the feel for the gold transfers again, gold transfers are tricky. They're not easy. I don't know why they don't want to um, release easy, but they don't. They're just a little bit, a little bit more fussy. Okay, so this is how much I have left of my midnight floral design. It's not a lot, but you know what? When I cut this up, this is enough to cover two drawers. I'm also going to use the rest of my partial um, moment. I've got two bits of words left for my moment, which will be cut up and put on. And then I took out all of my little gold butterflies from the broke um, gold transfers. Okay, so together, these three pieces, don't throw things away, keep them. Be a garbage collector. Be a little bit of a hoarder because it's good to, to keep your things. You never know when you're going to need them. So this one piece will be on the bottom drawer. I'm going to do two pieces on this top drawer and I'm going to put them on. 
So I guess my question for you is, have you done a transfer before? Is this the first time that you've seen somebody do a transfer? Um, I've not been doing them terribly long, but long enough that now I'm, I'm loving them. It took a little, it's a little bit of a learning curve and, and they're also a little scary in the fact that, you know, one transfer, it's not cheap, but this one transfer has done, this is the fourth piece that I've done with this transfer. So you're more than getting your money's worth when it comes down to it. Um, don't be afraid because I mean, that's literally what I used to think about transfers. I was like, oh my gosh, they're so expensive. They're really not when you spread them out. So transfers come on white paper. These, these papers were actually giant rolls of transfer. I think there was three sheets in this package. Okay, what happens is you cut them up I cut them up, it's the way I like to do it, because when you peel this back, it's sticky. Once you stick this down on your surface, okay, you cannot take it off. You need to be aware that once I lay this down without this white paper, I'm, I'm leaving it there. It's not coming off again. So you need to be aware of where your transfers are gonna go. You remove your backing, you toss it aside. You get ready to carefully and here's the tricky part, line it up. Because this drawer is curved, I'm gonna start on one end, put it down, and gently push it over to the right, okay? So there you go. I've got my one partial transfer down. You take your little wooden stick, this comes with the project, okay? I'm gonna be able to bring you in a tiny bit closer. So much stuff on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to show you how I do this. Hi, hi, Cynthia. Okay, so you wish you had later what? I missed the first part. I missed that first part. Save all the bits. You wish you save all the bits. I bet you that's what it was. So you're going to take your little tool and you're going to burnish your transfer down. I like to go over the entire transfer and then go back over it again. I'm not rubbing hard, okay? Here's where I made my transfer mistake. When I initially started doing transfers, I thought you had to like really scrape them and push them on. You don't. You just have to get them to grab. Once that one corner, that one spot grabs on and then you start to peel it back, you're able to see where it's burnished down, where it's sticking. And you can accordingly then pull the piece off. So I've brushed this down. And here's the other good thing I like about the Midnight Floral. This is why I picked this color. See? You're thinking ahead. You're, you're coordinating your colors before you begin. You need to know that, you know, this is something that you're gonna look at. Your, your eye is gonna be happy being in that you can see the same color. So here you gotta get in the edges, and I keep short nails um, because I'm constantly working. And you're gonna start to pull it off gently, okay? You're gonna be able to see when you pull it off where it's adhered to the piece and where it's not. Go slowly. And if a piece is not sticking, burnish it off again. All you're doing is making sure that it's sticking. It's kind of like a, a very thin sticker. And it, and it definitely takes more time than you know some of the other things. I'm a faux finish painter. I like to hand paint things. So sometimes transfers to me take a long time because I'm used to getting in there and literally hand painting this myself but they also add a beautiful clean effect to your your piece and gives you that kind of little juge that you're you're looking for okay so i'm making sure that my corners are down when i'm pulling and i'm gently taking my transfers off okay and if it's not stuck you can use your fingernail you can use your little tool and you're just removing. The bigger the piece, the easier it is to remove. The smaller the edging, the longer it takes to make sure that it's adhered, if that makes sense. So, one stencil is done. And hopefully I can do all of them tonight while you're on here with me. I just don't want it to take like, super duper long. I want you guys to have fun.
when you're watching. I don't want you to be bored. Okay, so when you apply your, then you're done. Here's your little, your little piece. When you apply your transfer, and I'm gonna bring it up and show you. So, there is a tiny, tiny white line around the transfer edge. This you can see now. When I take a paper bag or a very, very, very fine grit piece of sandpaper, you can gently burnish that down. I've even used a, a wet rag before, and that little line disappears, as well as, I wonder if I can easily, no, I wanna see where it goes. Um, as well as when you seal your piece, that little line disappears too, okay? So don't be afraid of seeing that little, that little bit. It's not a big deal. All right, so we now have two tiny transfers on. One up here, one here. What do you think? Are you starting to see how this is gonna to come together? That it's just that little bit different. It's definitely carnival and it's definitely fun. Okay, so here's my other piece of the transfer for this drawer. The other trick is to keep your handles handy, okay? And kind of see where they're gonna go. I know I don't want to put this right here. If you put this right here, this is going to go over top and you're going to lose the whole thing. There's no point in, in putting a transfer where there's a handle. I do, however, need to line it up with an edge because it's already been cut and it's a partial. So this one is going to go, I think, right here. Then I've got a couple little butterflies to put on. Actually, they're going to go here, there, and everywhere. There's just gold. Here we go, wish me luck. This is always the diciest part, is laying the stencil down. It's not that it's not fun, it's just that it's a little nerve wracking because you don't wanna mess it up, okay? I also have this little partial flower that I should have cut beforehand, but I'm gonna do it right now. Fingers crossed I don't screw it up. I just don't like a hard edge. I wanna kinda of make it a round, a round edge. There we go. So now when it lays down, it looks like a, a flower bud rather than a cut off piece. Okay. And also don't let your transfer fold over on itself because then you're stuck with it as well. So I'm going to line it up to the edge. And I'm going to push it down. There we go. Not so hard. Just a little nerve wracking. Just makes you a little nervous, that's all. So what's everybody doing tonight? I know it's dinner time. I'm probably doing this at like the worst time ever, but I wanted to get it done and I usually don't stay up that late. I'm up with the birds. So this was the perfect time for me. I'm also gonna be doing my gold gilding wax, of course. And that's gonna pull together the gold that's in this floral transfer because there is gold on here, even though it's hard to see. All right, you ready? I'm trying to get my fingernail in there, see if I can get it. <laughs> I can't, I gotta go for the top. I don't have the typical girly hands. I have like working, working man hands. Okay, so I burnished this down. Once again, I'm watching as I'm peeling off that it's all gotten stuck where it's supposed to stick. Go slow, take your time. It's worth it in the end. And don't go so fast that you like scratch your piece. Sometimes you can rush it and then the little stick will come up too high. And I've had it damage my paint before because I've tried to hurry and you can't. You need to keep it slow and steady wins the race. And I find the transfers if it's a word, like a black and white lettering that I'm gonna put on next, that stays on and adheres faster and easier than the color. And then gold is even harder to adhere than, than the color. 
I don't know why, but it's just the way that it goes. So it's a learning curve. Don't be surprised. Try a piece. You know, I like to go to the ReStore, the Habitat for Humanity ReStore, and buy old cupboard doors. Because if you buy some old cupboard doors, you can use them at home to paint and practice on. And then you're able to try something before you say, go throw it on a giant, huge buffet or somewhere that you, you know, you, you can't afford to make that mistake on. So you're gonna want to try these things on smaller pieces. Done. What do you think? Pretty cute, right? There you go. So we've got our colorful base, colorful drawers, everything is ombre. We're gonna keep moving along. Now that my flowers are placed, I can take this drawer out and do the butterfly. Because I didn't want to place that, so there you go. There. You can still see. Perfect. Have a little sip of tea. It's casual, casual night, casual transfer night. All right, so here is a butterfly. Again, take your handle. You want to remember that you want to see where your placement is. You don't want to stick a butterfly exactly where it's going to be in the middle of everything. Maybe a tinier one. So basically, I'm putting a butterfly here because this partial transfer is missing a flower. That's where I was cutting. And I don't want to um, have people look at that and say, oh, it's missing a piece. So I'm gonna stick a little tiny butterfly right over top of that missing piece so that when somebody looks at it, they think it's supposed to be like that. And see these transfers, okay, so this is the metallic transfer. It's hard because they're not see-through. See that? You have to make sure that you're putting it where it's supposed to be. So you lay it down once again. I've lost my stick, there it is. And you're just gently gonna rub it okay gently making sure so here's the other thing with these gold ones that I've learned if you scratch too hard on that gold the gold actually transfers almost like the whole piece rather than just where it's supposed to go and I don't know why but it's the way that it works but they're also really pretty because they are um, foil and they just add another element So now I've been able to cover up that tiny missing flower with a gold butterfly. He's super cute. And I'm also gonna be using my gold gilding wax. And now I have to decide if I wanna add more butterflies. So the gold, I have two, two for each. So the gold transfers, they come in sheets as well, but it's like many, many little pieces. Rather than getting, say, a giant transfer that you would just peel off and stick on, this is meant to be cut up. This is meant to be used in, in different areas as accent pieces. I'm gonna put one over here. So I want you to, I feel like a teacher. I feel like I wanna like tell you that you have to try new things and you have to try new projects because it's fun. You totally have to do it. And if you collect enough partial pieces, like I did, and you're able to save them, you've got enough to do, you know, all these little projects. I always buy the single nightstands if I can get them, because they're the fun pieces to practice on. You know, if you can get something cheap enough and small enough, it's easy to bring in the house, it's easy to work on, and it's easy and fun to play with. And it's not a giant time commitment versus some of the other big buffets or other pieces. And if you wanted to order any of these Dixie Belle paint products or even these transfers, they are sold at the link that is above my head. It goes right to the Dixie Belle webpage but it is a link that is connected to me through my affiliate link. So I do get a small kickback, which lets me then keep bringing you all these fun little 
tutorials. And they are fun. So out of all the things that I do, transfers take, take the most time. Because you're always nervous about messing them up. I know I am anyways. But like I always tell you, there's no such thing as perfect. It's just art. Just have fun. And make new things. Make pretty new things. There you go. We've got two gold butterflies on this gorgeous drawer, which will have beautiful gold hardware and gold gilding wax. So this little guy for now, I think is done. We're gonna slide him back in and have a look. Very pretty. I might go back in later, cut some more tiny little butterflies out and add them to the piece. But for now, this is good. This is what I wanna do. So now I'm down to my final piece of my midnight floral. Okay, I know you can see down here where it's gonna go. I can't decide, and when I was looking at it today, is if I'm gonna cut off, say, these leaves and put them on the other side. Because I only have this tiny bit left, I need to like conserve and balance it out. If I just use this one piece, it might be not enough because I need to add something to the other side as well. So if that goes there, I can always put this over here, balanced with the butterflies. I was debating actually cutting off this tiny little yellow thing too, which I think I might. And then that way I can use that on the other side as well. So there you go. One partial piece of the Midnight Floral Transfer it has to go over far enough under the handle. I think that will be fine. All right, now this drawer is low, so I am taking it out because I don't want to mess it up. So I'm gonna take it out and work on it here. And I'm gonna set it up so that you guys can see because I don't wanna do it on my own. Okay, this is where it's going, you can see. How's everybody, still hanging on, still watching? back you up a tiny bit with all my things oh look I just put my hand in my <laughs> in my deep woods oh well, speaking of deep woods I can see if I need to put another coat on my metallic it's actually looking really good with just one coat that's really surprising actually I will do another coat just to be sure And you guys know I can't leave stuff well alone, so I could even come in tomorrow and decide to add, you know, the deep woods all around the entire edge. I have no idea. These things, these things happen. Okay, so again, I need to line this up with the top of my drawer carefully. Because once you put this down, you're not picking it back up. There, it's on. Stress, stress free. I'm going to burnish it down and then peel it off. I love the way this transfer looks on pink. I don't know why I love red and pink so much, but I do. It's really cute. See, I almost made a mistake there. Went too far. So if you're watching, you've used transfers before. How was your experience? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you, were you worried about it? I really do feel like it takes a piece to another level. I think it's just a learning curve, as is with anything. You know, you need to learn how to paint. You need to learn how to do ombre. You need to learn how to do everything. I think I just overworked them the first time and was really worried about how they were sticking. And I was scratching too hard and, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the funnest experience. It literally took me like the whole day to do three drawers. But you live, you learn. And you figure things out as you go along. 
And nine times out of 10, I do it live on Instagram, especially things I've never done before because it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun to share crazy experiences and see, uh, see what happens. A couple weeks ago, I made some copper handles that I've never made before, that I never even used the tools before. And I did it all live on Instagram and it was very cute actually. They turned out amazing. I did it on a very industrial style, kind of a grungy chest and they were the bomb. I learned how to make them from Bella Renover. Christana did these amazing hardware on her blog and I totally watched her do it and I was like, if she can do it, I can do it. So thank you to Christana if she's ever watching this. She inspired me to make some copper handles. So hopefully I inspire you to make some fun art, to make a Mad Hatter design. I know it's whimsical and crazy, but I've, I always sell them. I mean, the only one that I haven't sold yet is the one that's sitting behind me. And that is probably gonna go to consignment this week because I think it needs eyes. You know, the, the pieces that are a little bit more extravagant sometimes just need more people looking at them. And since I usually sell from home, it's sometimes a little more difficult to get that picture across of what a piece really looks like. Once again, peeling off my transfer, watching these little itty bitty bits. They're the ones that are the worst for not sticking. And then I will burnish it down with either my tiny fine grit sandpaper or a paper bag or a wet towel works well for me as well, I find. Almost there. Done. What do you think? Pretty nice, right? So now I have to balance it out and do the other side over here. And I'm gonna use my partials that I cut up and put on the floor. So something has to go straight. So I'm going to have to cut a straight line. One will have to go here. And that piece has a cut up here, so that'll have to go at the top. So I'm gonna do the leaves first. And by the time you're done, these little papers are everywhere. It's a giant mess. This whole room is a giant mess, but you know, messy to me means I've actually accomplished something. So if you're just joining me later on and you're just catching me live now, I'm using partial pieces of transfer. I've got midnight floral, I've got moments, and I've got a gold Baroque style transfer. And I'm just using all my little bits and bobs and making something pretty. And then when I'm finished, I'll be adding my gilding wax and possibly another coat on those stripes, but we'll see. feel like the little fussy beat little pieces like this are you know harder to show you guys how things work because you can't get super super close and if I get super close then it's like you chop off the person doing it it's hard to do you need different camera angles but I'm not that techie Aaron's that techie if he's still watching he's the tech guy not me And then you grab your edge and you take it off. And 
And if you do hear noise in the background, everybody's home. Kids, dogs, husbands. So real life will be around here making noise. When I work inside and you guys get to join me on my painting, I do work in my dining room, so it is totally real life. <laughs> There's always people around. There we go. What do we think? There's the ombre drawer. This is the apricot into peony with a tiny bit of, um, I think I did a little bit of, of the aubergine on this corner. And now I've got a couple butterflies to add and then we can move into the gilding. And then that's it. That's it for this piece, other than sealing it, which I won't do until the daylight happens because I'm a little bit of a fussy, a fussy one with wanting to see where everything goes. Okay, so we've got two butterflies, one big, one little. I feel like the big one might have to go over here and the little one over here. to grab the ends of these things like oh it has to be so difficult there's one one more one more I feel like he has to go over on the side because the handle will be up here. Are they all facing the right way? Maybe this one has to go to the left. go. Second drawer done. Now I can put this back in and have a look at my Moonshine Metallics. So the Moonshine Metallics dries very quickly. Metallics always do. I will add a second coat just because I feel like it needs to be um, built up in layers. Metallics are always one of those things that look better when you build them up. So we're going to do the second coat of the Deep Woods Metallic. You're keeping long, even strokes, remember. You wanna make sure that your, your metallics look even. And by making sure that you're staying in one direction when you're painting them on, really helps. And when my tape is, my paint is dry, I'll take my tape off. And we're gonna do some gold gilding. I'm a big fan of the gold gilding wax. And we're gonna try the new Anastasia wax, which I haven't tried before. I'm excited about that. Okay, so two coats, done. Put this over here. I will wet my brush if I can find my spray bottle, because I'm gonna to have to wash it eventually. And I'm gonna put the lid on that. Perfect, so this is the Moonshine Metallics, Deep Woods, top drawer, done. Let's put that one in there too, so you can get a idea of what it is that I'm trying to achieve. So when this dries, the ghost, they're not ghost stripes, but they're metallic stripes, which means they're going to be shimmery and shiny in the sun. They're going to look amazing. And now I can bring you back up a little bit and you can join me on my gilding journey. Okay. So I have, oh, I also have these words. Should I put words on? It might be overkill to do the words. It's overkill. There will be no words on this piece. I'm going to put them away. So when I apply my warm gold gilding wax, I like to um, 
apply it with a brush, okay? I use a small makeup brush, which just looks like this, okay? Problem is, this makeup brush got eaten by a wild beast. <laughs> Kidding, my dogs, my dogs ate this. So right now, this is what I have, and this is what I'm gonna work with. But I wanna be able to show you how to apply some warm, warm gold gilding wax and how amazing it looks. So it comes in a little tin like this, and I just brush it on my brush, and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna add it wherever I want shine. So I want to add shine on my edges, always on the edges of my drawers. So I'm gonna pull this out because I don't wanna get it on the red, and I'm gonna brush it on. It's hard to see in this light, but when you have this in the sunlight, you're gonna be amazed at the shine that this gives you. When you take your pictures, when you stage this piece, it's by far the most amazing accent and looks good on any color. I have yet to find a color that warm gold gilding wax doesn't look good on. It always looks good. So you can see it kind of go on the edges. I really need to get a new brush. This is sad, sad, sad day. They actually ate it twice. It was a bit bigger than this. And then they got back a hold of it and it became even smaller. So I'm just applying my wax on all of my edges where I want the shine to be. Because when you photograph this, it just jumps right out. It's a beautiful, beautiful look to a piece. And I'll take a drawer all the way out so that you can see. So when you're applying your gilding wax, you're going to just kind of brush it on. Like I said, I like the brush because it just gives you that burnished edge. You can use your fingers. And it just gives that little shine. See that beautiful shine? It's really pretty. I always like to do my edges in gold gilding wax. It totally takes the piece up to like just another level. want to trap my tape in the drawer. Perfect. So you can apply gold gilding wax anywhere you want to have that shine, that shimmer. I like it a lot on purple. I like it a lot on the red. And I'm definitely doing feet. I'm definitely doing any curves. And I'm definitely highlighting corners and edges. All right, so let's try something new now. Let's get into the Anastasia. So I don't have another makeup brush. I have a black one, but I do have a tiny little craft brush, which I think might work the same. I'm just gonna dab it into this red, and we're gonna see what kind of shine we get with this red. I think it's gonna be really subtle until the light gets on it. I think it's one of those waxes that it's like a color on a color. It can probably only go on red, but I really, really wanted to try it and I really wanted to see what would happen. So, it's a little hard for you to see, but there is definite shimmer there. There is a definite marked shimmer that I think when the light hits it tomorrow is gonna be really, really, really pretty. So I'd say it's a win, I like it but I do, I do want to see it in the light. I definitely want to see what that happens with that. I wonder what it looks like on purple. Shall we try? Or is that a bad idea? Let's see. Can you see the foot of this? You can. Let's just take a tiny bit and do it on the edge here and see what happens. Okay, so it's pretty thick. I think it's gonna be one of those things that I probably need to clear wax first, then come back over and add this because I don't want it to be too much. 
I just want it to be a little bit of a bump. A little bit of a, hey, what's that shine over there? I actually really like it on the purple. This is, I'm kind of loving this. So Anastasia, I love it for the win. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be gilding all of the things now in red wax and gold wax because that is so nice. Can you see how cool that looks? It's just the perfect amount of shimmer. That's really nice. I really like that. Okay, good. Do it over here. What you do to one side, don't forget, you always have to do to the other. Continuity in furniture is important. You can't just do one little edge and expect it to look right. You gotta match it up. One thing you do need to know though about these little transfers and wax, you cannot lay down your wax and expect your transfers to stick on top, okay? Transfers only stick on unpainted surface or like a clear coat. So I've got this little guy up here that I have to do to match on this piece right here. And I'm gonna do it now because I don't want to forget and go in with that wax. Because then I'm gonna have a fight trying to get it to stick and I don't want that to happen. So how high up did I go? Again, remember what you do to one side, do to the other. It's important business. And I've got a ton more gold. Don't be surprised if after we uh, get off this little live tonight and you come back tomorrow to see the finished product, if I've done a crazy amount of more things. Because I tend to, to work at things and then look at them and then just keep adding and adding and adding and I can't stop. So don't be shocked when you come in tomorrow and it looks totally different because I'll just keep going. And y'all don't want to sit on live with me the whole entire night. I mean, how boring would that be? Okay. There it is. Just a cute little accent, just on the corner. Now I can take my, my red Anastasia and gild it. I wonder if it works better with the finger. Oh, it goes on much thicker with the finger. I think that the heat from a finger kind of activates it a little bit more, but I don't want it to be too harsh. I just want it to be a little bit up here because I still want more gold. I really like it on the purple though. Oh my gosh, it's so cool on the purple. I almost wish I wouldn't have done the gold on the foot. I would have just done the, the purple. Maybe I can mix them. Is that a thing? Mixing gold and, and red? There's no rules, right? There's no rules in art. I can do as I wish. Let's do it. Let's mix some red and some purple. Okay, now I'm gonna have to paint something entirely purple just so that I can put this all over it because holy cow, I love it. Okay, you still see the bottom there? We're still doing all right. I'm gonna gently brush this on here. Because when the light hits this, this is where the light is gonna go on all these little bits of the French Provincial that stick out. Perfect. I know it's hard to see waxes and I'm, I'm totally gonna come back tomorrow so that you can see it better in the light, but they are something that just, they just work amazing. I bet you this actually looks really good on a uh, pink as well. But we'll leave it on the base. Great, all right, so I'm gonna peel off some moonshine metallics so that you can see what this is gonna look like. Bring you in a little bit closer. There you go. And now you can check it out. So you're just gonna peel off your painter's tape very carefully, making sure that you're not gonna rush it. Um, you don't wanna make a mess and touch something where you, you weren't before. And if there's any bleed through, which so far I'm not seeing, I can easily go back in with my antebellum blue and fix that up 
but I'm liking how the green is pulling the green on the base together. At first when I did this today, I was a little bit like, yikes, I might have gone too far with the color change, but it's actually looking really cool. It's looking very whimsical, it's looking very fun. I'm gonna add all these fun little waxes and you're gonna see it grow and change over the next day or so while I fuss with it and get it where I want it to be. So that is all I'm really gonna do tonight, I think. I'm done my little transfers. You're able to see how the handles are gonna look on each drawer. And tomorrow I'm gonna come in and burnish these edges down and use clear coat wax and I think I actually might even add another coat of the rusty nail to the top, just for good measure. I only did one today, but I, I want to get in there and make sure I've got my little tiny stencils on either side. It's coming along. It's really super cute. It's a lot of fun. What do you think? I know that it was hard to get everybody to join me at dinner time tonight, but thank you for coming along on my journey. And I will give you a quick little recap of all of the colors used on this piece. I've got a base of aubergine into muscadine wine into rusty nail. The top drawer is painted in antebellum blue with the new moonshine metallics in the green deep woods for stripes. I've done this drawer in the holy guacamole and the kernel mustard and then I've done peony into what did I do? What is this one? Apricot. Okay so these are all blended. This is all an ombre finish. I'm going to go with my waxes. I'm going to hit it up. I've done my transfers. I've got three transfer partials but I only used two tonight so I didn't use my moment transfer. I just used my midnight floral and my gilded baroque scrolling and I'm really loving it. I'm loving the way that it looks. So thank you for joining me tonight and coming along on my journey and letting me try some new things that I haven't done before and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't be afraid of trying new things. Try some stencils. Try some crazy red wax. Who would have thought that that was going to look so good on the leg like that? It literally makes me want to paint something purple and do this all over. <laughs> I like to be a little bit extra. I'm not going to leave it halfway. I'm going to do a giant piece because that would be amazing. So thank you once again for joining me on my journey um, at the Top Drawer RVA. Tune in tomorrow because I will be finishing this guy up and you can see a picture on how beautiful all of that gilding wax glows how the light is going to hit that beautiful deep woods in the metallic. And yeah, that's about it. So I hope everybody has a great night. Take care and I will see you tomorrow.